Hello everybody, this is Eric, and today I'm going to be starting up a new series, playing Banished, the city building simulator with a bit of a survival twist to it. And I'm also going to be playing with a number of mods. Let me just run through the list real quick. Colonial Charter, and the recent version, Excellent Adventure, adds so many new things to the game that it is quite amazing to think that it's the same game when you play with that on. Also have a mod for a bigger cathedral. The fountain mod adds a number of new things. It's not quite as extensive as Colonial Charter. And a new college building. And I'm going to turn off the debug menu because that would allow me to cheat my way out of things. So those are the mods. Changes to the loaded mods requires the menu to be reloaded. Alright, fine. Reload the menu. So if you are not familiar with Banish, the first like 30-40 minutes at least of my series is going to be mainly utilizing the vanilla aspects of the game, so no worries, let's just start a new world up, give it a random name, Dustigny, sure, pick a random seed. Now Colonial Charter does add several new start options to it, I think though I may keep it on just the vanilla valleys. Do you want a very large map though? Regular vanilla start. I'm gonna turn disasters off just because this game is hard enough as it is without disasters, at least to me. I find it a very hard game to get started. As for the starting condition, Colonial Charter adds a few sort of rather specific starting conditions. I'm gonna go with Silk Road and as we get into the game I'll explain exactly what that means. Your country has rested all of their colonial ambitions on your venture. Your job is to ensure the survival of your country's citizens. So this game has a little bit in common I guess with the SimCity franchise, if you will, or any of these, those other city building games, but in Banished, you need to keep your citizens alive. They need food, or then they need resources, and when winter comes, they need to stay warm. Alright, let's pause the game before it moves completely to the other side of the map with the spacebar, and we can take a look at our starting conditions right here. So these are our villages. I wonder how many we have. How many? That's not... Hold on. How many people are there? There are 12 adults and 10 children. Alright, and everybody's got a house and we've got a number of resources, some firewood, iron, logs, and stone to start off with. And just some tools and some clothes and some food. And the Silk Road starting condition also gives us the ability to make silk right off the bat. Well, not completely right off the bat. What we need to do is we need to grow some white mulberries. Well, then we can use that to grow some silkworms, which then can make silk cocoons, which a weaver can turn into silk. Well, then silk, we can... A, we can trade it for other things, and B, we can make more clothes out of it. And this is our map. This is actually not quite that good of a start because we're sort of pinned in with the mountains over here, the lake over here, and mountains down here. I did choose valleys, right? And not mountains because this is a pretty mountainous area. I really don't like this seed, but I'm going to go with it for starters. So, first thing I normally do in the game is keep things paused and just plan out where you want things to go and food is always a big priority because you have 2400 potatoes but that's not gonna last very long not really one thing I do want to do right off the bat is see if I can squeeze a fishing dock right here actually is this I know it's an isolated lake this is where traders are gonna come in once you build a trading port so I want to make sure that I'll leave room for a trading port 
Okay, so fishing dock right there is going to be good. I'm curious to see if I can squeeze later in the game a mine in here, and the answer is going to be no. A mine has to be halfway on a mountain, or then have some flat land in the front of it. So we can't squeeze a mine there, that's unfortunate. Alright, I also want to get a small farm placed. I'm going to do probably 9x9 nine nine so it's symmetrical with the orchard right here. And let me bring up some menus. We got our professions list right now. Everybody's a laborer, but I'm going to need some people to be builders so that they can build that fishing dock. You can also set your resource limits, so if you have people out cutting trees, they will stop cutting trees once we have 500 logs in our inventory. I'm going to set all of this up to 500. That's a good starting number, I think. Tools 100 and clothes 100. And food, you can never, ever, 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 ever have too much food. So that's my limits. And an event log is just a nice thing to have right here so you can see exactly what's happening. Alright, so fishing dock farm. I also do, I want to lay down the blueprints for a few other things, but I don't want them to be built just yet. For example, the trading post. It's going to take a lot of resources to build it, which is why I don't want to build it yet. But I want to make sure we leave space for it here. So I can just pause it right there. It's going to take 80 logs, 80 stone, and 40 iron. We don't even have that much stone, so definitely going to hold off on that. Okay, I'm going to unpause for right now. Let it go to 5. They're just going to grab some food and some firewood so that they have their home stocked. Or then they will get working on things, hopefully. Alright, they're carrying resources out to the fishing dock. Now we got our logs, we got our stone, and now the two builders will work on that. Okay. Do I have anything besides mulberry? No, so I can't plant something in the meantime. I want to go ahead and assign one farmer to work on this white mulberry. So this guy, as soon as he figures out what he needs to do, he's going to go over there and start planting some white mulberry trees. Alright, I don't want to see that question mark above there. Let me just turn those off because I don't have mulberries to be growing silkworms and I don't have silk cocoons to be turning that to silk so it's kind of pointless to even have these buildings at the moment. But they're there for later. I also want to see about getting some more food buildings up. So for example a gatherer's hut. I would put down here out in the forest down here. It's a ways away, but you don't want to stick a gathering hut right here in the center. Because, I mean, what is there to gather in this radius around here? It's all bare land. Alright, this is done. I want to grow some radishes before it gets too late in the year. Hopefully we can get some good food out of that. Alright, the fishing dock's done. I'm also going to assign, I think, two people to work in the fishing, to work in the fishing dock. Alright, they're breaking down all those stones to clear the land for the gathering hut. I think I do want to lay down a blueprint for a blacksmith. So that once we get some iron in, we can make tools. I think I'll put that. Why can I not build something there? Is there a itty bitty hill that's preventing me from building right there? Yeah, it looks like it. Alright, pause that. I've got this cleared out, now it's just a matter of bringing the resources over. Speaking of resources, we are going to want some people to be cutting down trees. But where do I put this? I may have to put it down by the gathering hut. This... I can afford to put a few resources into a bridge right here, I think. If I can find a place where they will let me build a bridge. That way we can get to this part of the map. Builders are going to be working on that. 
food is highly important, especially in the early stages of the game, so most of what I work on in the early game is all about food production. Is somebody working here yet? I hope so. There's, there's some radishes growing. Alright, we're down to 80 logs. Good, and Forrester will cut down some more trees and get some logs out of that. So we'll have one be built over there. Hopefully the builders can finish that. They're probably still working on this, aren't they? Oh, no, this is done. One, two. People working there for right now. Oh, then I'll have four laborers in reserve. Laborers will do very general tasks. When you work on a new building, laborers will carry the resources over there. They'll cut down stuff. And if I just want to clear out all this stuff right there, laborers will do that. To get some of these trees cut down too. For the logs. Speaking of which, firewood as well. We've got 50 firewood in reserve. So I definitely want someone to be cutting down. Not cutting down, but cutting logs to make firewood. Alright, the bridge is built now. The laborers are coming over to wherever I built the Forester's Lodge. They're cutting down resources. I think I may put a stockpile right here so that when they clear all these resources, they don't have to walk all the way over here to put resources back. They can just drop it right here for right now. Which is fine. Time is also a very important resource in this game. I wonder if one person might be too few for this field though. We'll see how they do. Once it hits 100% yield, they'll start, they'll start harvesting it. But if you want to harvest it early, you have the option to. You're not going to get as much out of it, but if winter's about to hit and winter will kill all your crops, then you can harvest early, so at least you get some crops rather than no crops. Alright, that's cleared out, now we just need logs and stone, and those trees are coming down nicely. Gatherer's hut is working. Got lots of children being born this summer. Uh, what was I going to do? I was going to think about putting down a hunter, hunting cabin as well in the area. Okay. How's the forest at large going? Uh, it's going at slow work though. Looks like the laborers are actually putting resources from here to there rather than using these logs. Oh well. Hmm, there's a lot of iron right here. I kind of want to get it so I can start making tools early. Tools will help your workers work faster and more efficient. If they don't have tools, they only get so many logs when they cut down a tree. And if they don't have tools, it'll take them like twice as long to cut down a tree. So running out of tools is a bad thing. But we got 37 in reserve. That's not too bad. Alright, he's working on the harvest now and it's late summer. So I think we will be able to get all that harvested before winter. Oh, what's taking so long on the stone? Hurry up, guys. Let me speed time up a bit here. Look, there's some. There's something right here that's not been picked up yet. Oh, I see how the laborers are bringing the resource over to the hunting cabin. I think they forgot about this guy. Oh, no, the framework's there. It's the builder's job now. Love the music in this game. Alright, that's done as well. 
Oh, I totally forgot about this. Let's get a guy cutting firewood. What's my firewood cap? 500? Alright. I don't have that many logs though, so let's start cutting down trees so he has something to make firewood out of. How's this going? It's going. It's almost done. I want to set one person there just now, because I don't have that many laborers in the reserve at the moment. But I'm going to have them only cut down trees. I don't want them wasting time on planting trees at the moment. Oh, well, we have two people who have just become adults and are now working as laborers. So children, children don't really do anything. They can't, they can't work, they're too young to work. Alright, so, but once you turn 10, I think you can become a laborer, so you got one right there, and one right there, oh man, they're the same sex, so I can't put them into a house on their own and let them make babies. Oh, did we get a third? Ooh, we got a fourth as well, so we can probably afford to make a new house. How about one? Actually, let's put one down here near the hunting cabin and the gathering hut so that the gatherers can live close to where they work or the hunters and I will put a second forester and a third fisherman we got over a thousand food who's cold oh you because you're walking all the way over there go find somewhere warm before you freeze to death Alright, uh, that's more like it. How many radishes do we get out of it? 588 radishes from that field. That's a good one. I still want to start planning out where I put more fields. Because I need a lot of funds. Or I will at some point. Probably here is a good place for a bunch of funds. Alright, well, you got the hunting cabin done. I will put one person there at the moment. So we have a hunterman and a fisherman living here. I suppose that's better than nothing. Go ahead and do your civic duty and make babies, please. I think I'll start building another house, too, in the center of town. How are we doing on resources? 30 logs. Just cut some more down. Let's cut all of these down. Actually, it's not just worry about the logs, let's worry about everything. So the logs is low, yes, I plan on fixing that. Uh, 200 firewood. Let's have you start working for the moment. And he'll be a laborer until I tell him to start working again. With only however many houses we have, it's not a lot. We don't need that much firewood to start with. But eventually I want to get getting a lot of firewood because it's a good trading resource. Speaking of trading, how many stuffs do we need for this? 80, 80, 40? Yeah, that's a lot. I think I'm going to want to work on the blacksmith before this. Okay. Now it looks like we filled up the stockpile. I'll put another one here. This house got built. Awesome. These guys are working. I want to add a second hunter. And now I think I'll just try to get as many resources built up as I can. Random rock right there. Grabs these rocks too. Gonna need some stone. wonder if I can get a small, small but tall farm in here. Oh wow, we can, we can make it 10 by 10 right here. Okay. The next, next labor we get will be dedicated to this farm. 
So it's summer already, so I can't start. I can't start now. I'll start next spring. All right, they're doing good on cleaning out those resources. So let's go ahead and let them apply that to the blacksmith. Also, do we have any new people that can move into a house on their own? We've got two that can move out and one. All right, so yeah, we can build a new house. No, I didn't realize that required 55 stone at the time. Oops. There went most of our stone. No worries. One of the mods that I have has a small wooden house. Functions about the same as a wooden house, but it's quote unquote small, even though it's taller. But it requires less resources. Not, wait, 20 wood? 20 wood? 20 by 16, so it doesn't require less, it requires more. Hmm. Weird, but it's just another another design of a wooden house. I think I'll build one of these over by this guy. Guess I'll have an N. An N. What is an N like? This is from a mod as well. I think it's like a boarding house. We got the blacksmith done. Let's get somebody working on crude tools or iron tools. They require the same, it's just a matter of how long it takes to make them and how good they are. I think we can go straight to iron tools. Speaking of iron, let's collect some iron for the guy. Still got 200 firewood. I think we're doing fairly decent on food. 1300 going into winter. It's not bad, I just need to make sure to stay on top of that. Alright, so next spring, let's grow some potatoes. Has this guy been harvesting white mulberry yet? No. That's the thing with orchards. You can plant things here, but it's going to take several seasons to grow them up before you can harvest from them. Whereas with farms, you can plant and harvest immediately. Let's also pick up some of this stone down here. squeeze a shore house on a river. Ooh, that's that's good. I can squeeze some of these shore houses here. Let's go ahead and build one right here. Shore houses are built on beaches, by lakes, or rivers, and you can do a number of things there. You can dig sand, which can be used to make glass, or you can dig clay, which can be used to make bricks. Or if you really need to, they can go hunting for frogs and other river amphibians for food. So eventually, they will be needed for industry. But at the moment, I'm just going to have one guy here collecting food. So sand, clay, turtles or frog legs. Catch turtles. Turtles sounds interesting. I wonder what fried turtle tastes like. Right, we got radishes growing, we got potatoes growing, reserve of firewood is low. That's right, we used up all the firewood in the winter. Cut down some more trees, how about these guys? 
I could put another forester right there if I needed to. He's harvesting now. Awesome. Dude, that's not gonna be a lot. I think I, I think I do need a second mulberry orchard. Eventually, I will. I don't have. Oh, we got a ton of new laborers, so maybe I will go ahead and build this guy. And I will plant and have a new person there. Two fifty three, that's guy's pretty slow. Now you may be wondering if there's any difference in crop type, and there is, and Colonial Charter added like fifteen or twenty new crop types. So some of them have very similar stats, but different crop types can have different um, growing lengths. They can grow really fast then you can harvest them before summer whereas others will take a very long time to grow and some can survive very long into the winter others will get killed by the slightest trace of snow I'm not really that knowledgeable about what's what I know a few tricks about a few but other than that I just split up my crops just for realism. You wouldn't have a village lasting only on potatoes. Potatoes would get really old very fast. Pretty sure that's a possible food source that we can get. Don't want to leave that around. There's another one right here. Reserve of iron is low. Oh, that blacksmith's making a ton of, ton of tools. Let's go. Well, let's just get that much for right now. And we got 90 tools, you can start working. And I'll do that. And that guy's shirt is very brightly yellow. These deer right here, I can't really kill them, they're just there for visual effect. pretty interesting you can see a whole herd of deer just run straight through your orchard right by your houses and it's a very interesting sight so we got a lot of laborers recently let's build a new house how much stone do we have about 76 stored stone we would also need 10 iron we can afford that stone houses don't need nearly as much firewood to keep warm but they require more stone and iron so I'm not going to be building a ton of those just yet. If you had a lot of resources stocked up, you will be able to convert wooden houses to stone houses. So how much white mulberry do we get? 260. Now, people don't eat mulberry, right? I'm pretty sure. So I'm just, I'm going to stock up a bunch of mulberry before I start growing silkworms. Food is continuing to go up, that's good. Uh, logs are a bit low though. That's right. Hold on, stop. Come on, game. Let me collect all these along the river. How much food do you get out of this? You got 117 turtles. Man, you're gonna drop those turtles extinct. Might as well get this iron right here as well, and those guys. I do think I need to be building a new forester though, or at the very least, getting more people here. I forgot that I had set this guy to cut only, so yeah, he's chopped out a lot of these trees, but we'll try to plant some more back. I think I will actually stick a forester here, but let's wait to build it until spring.
Yeah, these laborers that are going... Sh shut up, phone alarm. These laborers that are going all the way up here, by the time they get there, they're cold and hungry. So you need to be careful during the winter. If you send guys all the way up here to do something, they might die before they get back to eat. Alright, it's late winter, about to be spring. Still got a lot of people that are cold. What are you doing? Well, what, what are you doing on the way over here? Oh, are you, you guys, are you seriously? Can you not just walk across that river? They're walking all the way over here, all in along here, just to cut down these trees. Okay. Alright, fine. Guess you guys do need a bridge somewhere here. If you will let me place one somewhere. There. So I need to see if this is, I want to see if this is enough space for later in the game a quarry. It is. I'm going to place that there, but pause it. So that I know that that's enough space. Actually. Let me move it as far into the corner as I can. Because I might think that's as far as I can get it. Well then, I could probably also put mines here. Well, maybe not there. Maybe. Will you let me do it? Put a mine there. I could put a mine there. So that'll be a big resource gathering area later in the game. this down to five because it's going a little fast for me. How about we clear out all this stone and the iron that's in the area. And I will unpause the other forester. They don't seem to be eating the mulberry leaf, that's good. Okay, I'll go ahead and start looking then. Let's make some silk cocoons. And then once we get enough silk cocoons, we can turn them into silk. Which I will probably just trade off for the time being, once we build the trading post. gatherer. They get a lot of stuff. There are a whole bunch of new laborers. Let's build another house down here. Oh, no, not, not an itty bitty house. I want one of these. What's this guy doing? Let's put, another, put another one of these down. Still got 77 tools in reserve. I suppose I sort of jumped right into this game without taking a few seconds to, seconds to explain the whole menu setting. There's a whole bunch of tabs here. This one's all about time. This one's tools and reports. Here you've got all sorts of different housing related things from your very small wooden house to a tiny little shack, more of a lean-to. A wooden house, a log cabin, stone house, country house, looks like that. Town abode, looks like that. And a large residence, looks like that. Then we have a boarding house, which can hold a ton of people. And a medium stone house, like this. 
Okay, then next this is roads and bridges you get your dirt road stone road brick road um, you got some different plaza pieces stone plaza plaza corner and corduroy road and you got a wooden bridge stone bridge different kind of stone bridge not sure about the difference there and a tunnel through hills this is all about storage storage bunch like this one stockpile you can also specialize your stockpile based on different resources here you have a small rural market or a very lo uh, slightly larger central market or you can have tiny stalls to sell various things fruits, vegetables, grain, protein, so meat textiles, clothes, materials trading post as I built there uh, bank barn which is like a storage shed except it's slightly larger but has to be built up against a mountain what else grain silo for storing grain so wheat barley that kind of thing is there logs as low oh no uh, root cellar also goes up against the mountain for storing fruit and vegetables and meat locker for storing meat obviously town services well these come from a mod stone gatherer and iron gatherer especially the people that work there just go out and go mine stone and iron and come back and drop it off I've messed with it it's not very efficient you can just assign laborers to go do it but anyway moving on well small schoolhouse for training children to be educated and educated workers work slightly more efficiently but they're in school for I think it's like 15 or 16 years oh, then they become a laborer instead of 10 years then they become a laborer so it's a trade-off the college that comes from a mod so it's a slightly bigger school hospitals you can get diseases the easiest way to get the disease is if you have a band of nomads that wants to join your town they can they often bring diseases with them town hall it looks cool and you can also see different graphs of your population and how it's doing resources used per year but it requires a lot of resources to build small parish house is a mini church people can get a happiness bonus if they go to church and the chapel can hold more people than the cathedral from a mod so a big city type thing you can also build a cemetery but then from a mod you got a stone castle or a castle that's built up against the mountain an abbey it's also like a mini chapel pretty cool looking um, back alley comes from colonial charter so it's like it's a back alley where shady deals are done these come from the fountain mod but they're broken at the moment so I'm not gonna really explain them too much then food production um, things from the fountain mod the fountain mod adds water as a resource but it's not compatible with um, colonial charter so it so the water functionality doesn't actually work but you can add fountains that look cool so once I have enough resources to build one I was going to put a fountain right here in the middle farms for crops orchards you can build a pasture fishing dock a water mill that can take grain and make flour out of it well then flour you can use to make bread and other things Windmill does the same thing, but on land. Hunting cabin we've already seen. Gatherers help we've already seen. You can build various butchers. So for example, we have the hunter, so we might want to build a deer butcher, which will take venison that the hunters get. The hunter got 300 venison last season. So this guy will cut that up into more efficient types of meat and also slightly more valuable types of meat that we may consider selling. Gatherers hut we've already seen. 
an oil press can take oils from olives and sunflower can make oil from olives and sunflower, flax, cotton, whale blubber, that kind of thing. And oil can be used to make lamps, that kind of thing, which can be sold. Apiary, if you want to keep some bees, you can get honey and beeswax from that. Sugar house, take sugar cane, make sugar and maple syrup. A preservist, take fruits and vegetables, make different kinds of jams, pickles, that kind of thing. A wharf and ship, if you want to put that on a river or a lake, and they can go out, they can hunt whales, and get whale blubber and whale meat. Also seals, I think. And a dairy. If you have cows, you can get milk from cows and make butter, cream, cheese, that sort of thing. And this is the fountain log, which adds a whole bunch of decorations. Fountains. Solar quadrants. Interesting. Hedges flower beds, and if you wanted to build your own castle. Resource production, woodcutter, to make firewood. Sawmill goes on a river, and it makes firewood slightly faster than a normal woodcutter. Blacksmith, herbalist to gather herbs to keep your people healthy. See, we're not doing so well on the average citizen health, so I may build a herbalist sometime soon. Uh, you can gather... not really sure how the bundling shit works. Organics are gathered and cut into bundles for fuel. Okay. Tailor to make clothes. Distillery. You can, you can make alcohol. That should be over here in the alcohol production though. Brewery, winery, distillery, and curing barn for tobacco. That sort of thing. Uh, you can make candles. You can make glass. You can make charcoal. You can make rope. Rope is a pretty important resource for the colonial charter buildings. A lot of buildings require rope. Rope would you make from hemp or flax, which are grown on farms. But we don't have the seeds to make hemp or flax, so we're going to need to trade for them. Uh, there's the silkworm hut, oh, then you got the mine and the koi, this is alcohol. You can build wharfs along, you know, the coast. That's mainly decorative. Speaking of decorative, there's a whole range of decorative options from colonial charter. Statues, flags, let me rotate it around so you can sort of see it. The flag icon is in the way so you can't probably see it that well, but you have a different range of flags you can build. Wooden fences, stone walls, palisade walls, colonial walls. You can plant trees, you can plant fruit trees if you have those seeds. You can build hedges, plant flowers, flower beds, coats, crates, logs, bales, benches, scarecrows. Well then this is about removing things. You can schedule a building for demolition. I've been using the remove resources a lot. Well then remove iron, remove stone, logs, remove roads, or cancel removal. And that is that, and this has been Banished episode number one. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think of the game, and I will see you guys in the next episode.